so I'm going to have a go at making a face mask because um, there's been all this news on today. Um, so I thought about what I could improvise. Well, I don't like long pyjama trousers and yet I've got loads of them. So what I've actually done today and I'm about to show you is cut the legs off a pair of pyjamas and I'm going to use a leftover material to make a face mask. So here goes. Let's just show you the cut off trousers. So here we are. Once long pair of trousers, I've cut them off into shorts, I'm going to hem those later. Here are two pieces of cotton ironed and cut out and matched up. Now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to sew these two pieces together and I'll do that now. Machine, all threaded up with red and I, I, I'll fill you in a minute. Okay, so end of stage one, as you can see, I've stitched all the edges together. Um, now it can't exist as a square, it's got to somehow fit tightly over your nose. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim the edges off now and then I'm going to put some pleats in them to give it that effect. I'll let you know how that goes. Okay, now you can see I've trimmed the edges off. Um, now what I did notice was when I was when I was trying to stitch the fabric it was a bit stretchy so what I tried to do was I stretched it out and I used fairly big stitches while I was stitching. Comes the first bit of hand stitching what I've done is I've gathered up about two centimeters of the cloth and I'm going to tack it over before stitching it in place. Does that make, hope that makes sense. Okay, so now you can see I've tacked up the pieces to make the bend for the bottom of the nose and the mouth. So now I'm going to machine those so they'll hold in place firmly when the mask is made. There you can see all nicely tacked up now. Okay. So now goes into the next part, which is adding some tape around the edge to seal the edges and make it look a bit neater when people are wearing it. This is the tape I'm going to use. It's called bias binding and you can see that it's already um, ironed flat uh, and that's how you buy it. Um, and basically create a fold like um, the edge of a pasty with the cloth in the middle and the two edges folded up over the outside. I'll just tack it in place now so that you can see. Okay, so here's the, the mask and it's all pinned up. Um, it's really, really important to make sure that when you put the bias binding across, you put it on both sides equally and that you cover up as much as you can all the stitching and all the all the bare edges. This is the bit I hate most because it hurts my fingers a lot. So now I'm going to tack it up um, and as I tack it up I'm actually going to use a thimble. My thimble is quite pretty because um, the pressing it through this cloth is quite hard um, and it can hurt the ends of your fingers. So yeah, use a thimble if you've got one. I just thought I'd show you how to do the corners. So you actually stitch up to the corner and then you fold the corner back as if you were wrapping a parcel and making the tab and then stitch over there. I'll show you when I've done it. Can you see what I've done? I've sort of, I've held the corner up and then I've stitched it over and pulled it back and then just stitched to hold it in place. So here it is, all tacked up and ready um, to be sewn around the edge. Um, I could have used nice contrasting um, tape, but I think this looks okay for my first effort because my sewing tends to be messy at the best of times. 
important when you sew to sew as close to the edge as possible. That way you've got a better chance of, of capturing all of the, the fabric up into the tape and not having mucky edges. But if you have a mucky edge, don't worry, it can be sorted out by a little bit of hand sewing. Okay, here it is. I've decided to sew two nice lines around the edge because I let you into a secret. I missed some of the edge on the other side the first time. So I thought I'd do a double row um, and now for the boring job of taking out this tacking stitches. You'll need a pin or a tack remover um, to get rid of all that nasty black cotton and then it'll look quite nice. I'll show you at the end. So here's the finished article. Um, it looks okay. I've got to put two things onto it now, which I'm going to have to experiment with. One is I'm going to put some elastic so that it sticks to the face. But the other one is I'm going to try and attach a metal strip to f shape it over the nose. Um, because the government advice and all the advice says the masks that fit tightly over the nose are the ones that are the most useful. OK, so I'll be back in a minute. OK, so government guidelines have said that masks are better if they fit closer to the nose. So I've had, these are for my hobby, um, and if you look, they've got like a curved bit of metal on the top and some foam on the underside. I'm going to try and replicate that with the materials I've got available. I realise that not everybody might have the same material, so you could try the um, the metal bars from in the inside of um, those sort of curlers that you can mould or anything like that so just take things apart I've got tin snips, I've got some copper um, I've cut out a piece of copper I've softened off the edge using a, a normal um, sanding block so that it doesn't cut into me and then I've used a hammer and a small nail um, to poke little holes through it so that I can actually physically stitch it onto my fabric so there you go, it's a little bit Heath Robinson, but I'll just let you know how it works. Okay, so now I'm back at my other work table. I've got a ruler so that I can measure the centre to get the nose portion in the middle um, and to make sure that I can get my nose piece at the right height. Um, and then I can use this, the, um, the holes to stitch it in place like I would a button on a shirt. Okay, thank you. Okay, so now I've measured the distance between the two ends, the length of my um, nose strip, and I've put two sharpies where it should lie. And now I'm going to stitch it in place. See that I've sewn on my nasal strip, and I've just attached the first two pieces of elastic. Um, I've done it using a zigzag stitch on the reverse side. Now, the reason I've done this is because some of the masks that I had and I bought, were, the weakness was the elastics kept falling off. So I've stitched them very firmly to make sure that they won't come off. Now, you could put ear to ear loops um, to go around the back of your ears. I struggle with that because I, I don't like them around the back of my ears. Um, so I'm gonna put two loops right across from one side to the other so they can go around the back of my head. Um, and I'll just finish that off now and then the mask should be complete. Okay, so here it is. It's finished. Um, it's nicely holding around my nose quite tightly. Um, and despite the fact that it balloons at the side, perhaps I should have made it a bit shorter on the edges. Um, it's still got quite a nice tight fit around there around there and under my chin. Now the one thing I did find out was that the elastic loop at the bottom was too long. So what I've done, I've cut it and I've turned it into a tie. So if I make any more of these, what I might do is, is I might put an elastic at the top, which goes at the back of the head here um, to hold it up there. Um, and I might put a, a ties around the bottom so that it, it grips nightly, nicely around the neck. Also, I think I possibly could have made it a little bit shorter. So that would have helped. Anyway, I'll just take it off and show it to you. Okay, so here we go. There's the elastic at the top. There's the ties at the bottom. And as I say, I think this is a prototype. But next time, I'll probably use um, some um, th some 
tape that's not elasticated to make those ties. Um, and um, as I say, the, the bar at the top fits quite nicely. You can take one out of a, a mask that's broken like that, or we, I guess you could even use a paper clip. Um, use your imagination. Um, so that's it. That's how to make a improvised face mask. Now, before I go, what I wanted to say was that we know that these are no replacement for surgical masks. Um, all the data shows that they don't act as such an effective barrier, particularly if they get wet. So, and one of the issues is that it's quite hot wearing them. So I guess if you are gonna use these, then you need a supply of them and only wear each one for a short time. They should be washable. Um, if you're worried about the strip, the way that you might be worried about the um, underwires in your bras, then, then potentially, um, you might want to put them in a washing bag before you wash them, but they are washable. It's cotton from um, a pair of um, pajama trousers, double layered, um, double stitched and taped around the edge with a, um, a pleat to create space for the middle of the face where we tend to bulge up um, and quite straight at the edges. Okay, so there we go. I hope that this is useful to you. Bye. Okay, before I go, I wanted to add um, a final message. Um, the face mask that I've made isn't meant to substitute for any of the recommended advice that the government's given you about social distancing and about the way we should stay at home and look after each other. Um, it's just meant as an extra precaution to help you stay safe. Um, it's a challenging time that we're going through at the moment um, and I know how difficult it is. Um, but if my little video um, and make help in any way, um, I'll be glad. So final message, stay safe, look after those who are vulnerable um, and we'll come through this together. Bye.